As the title suggests, this is another episode of Struggle Meal. It's always good to keep Struggle Meal recipes around because you never know when life is gonna kick in the crotch, give you a wedgie, and spit on your face. Over the past few weeks, I received a lot of recipes from all of you. Today, we'll make them, try them, and rate them 1 through 10. I divided the recipes up into four categories. Rice, instant foods, pizza, and murder attempts. These are recipes that seem so weird that I can't really tell if it will change my life for the better or you're just trying to kill me. First recipe is called mug pizza from Teen Artist. We're using my annoying roommate's mug that says no coffee, no talkie. He thinks he's quirky, but we're just lame. Four tablespoons of flour, an eighth of a teaspoon of baking powder, and a sixteenth teaspoon of baking soda. Who measures like that? We'll also add some salt, mix all the white ingredients, we'll move on to the wet ingredients. Which is just milk that I got for myself and some olive oil. Turn that into a paste, we'll top it with whatever we like. Obviously we're gonna go with a lot of never ending raclette. Finally we'll just throw it into the microwave for a minute and a half. Do you think my microwave's clean? Here it is, the mug pizza. Smells better than it looks, but let's give it a taste and rate it 113. Tastes kind of like an overly moist biscuit or a really savory cake. The cheese definitely saves the day. As a struggle meal, is a solid 6 out of 10. The tortilla crust is a little unstable, so we're gonna stack them up. And our first step is to put them in the oven to get crispy. And to make it more authentic, we'll top it off with tomato puree and never-ending raclette. Just like how Ashley White's Nana used to do it. And then back into the 400 degree oven for about 8 minutes. My annoying roommate's watching TV, so there's a lot of background noises. But trust me, this thing is really crunchy. This actually looks like one of those flatbread pizza they sell at Domino's. Just tastes like a low-end frozen pizza. Definitely cheaper, so on a struggle meal scale, I'm gonna give it an 8 out of 10. As I'm pulling out the other half wheel of raclette, I noticed something horrible happened. Then I started thinking, raclette's already fermented and covered in mold, so more shouldn't hurt, right? We'll just cut it off and use it for this recipe, and whatever happens to me after the video, I'll keep you guys updated. If I stop posting for a while, you wouldn't be surprised. We also need some kimchi and corn. Raymond also asked for I give us a chance to keep you mayo, but since we already have the raclette, I'm gonna skip it. Because if the never-ending raclette and the I give us a chance to keep you mayo is ever in the same bowl, the universe will explode. We'll put another tortilla on top and sear both sides on medium-low heat for 3 minutes. Yeah, yeah. This is the best looking one so far, I have high hopes for it. Cheese nicely melted, let's give it a taste. The acidity from the kimchi and the fattiness of the cheese has a nice contrast going on. My only complaint is the lack of protein, but you know, it's a struggle meal. It tastes amazing, but it's not that easy to make, so I'll give it an 8.5. Moving on to the instant food segment. Nothing screams struggling more than canned beans and ramen noodles, so we're gonna put them together and make it into a burrito. Look Egg also asked for cheddar cheese and dried parsley. I'm gonna skip those. I'll just microwave some Taco Bell refried beans, cut up some pepper, and pretty much all of the flavor in this burrito come from my favorite ramen, Indomie. I should make a dedicated video for it. We'll go a layer of beans, pepper, and noodles. Roll it up. I've been seeing a lot of comments lately accusing me of being obsessed with cross sections. My response to that is, you're right. And this one is looking pretty good. The refried beans gets kind of creamy intertwined between the noodles. It creates a pretty interesting texture. And the pepper has the freshness that I desperately needed. But I'd rather eat indomie on its own, so I'll give it a 5.5 out of 10. This one scares me a little bit. Our boy Amir calls this soy oats. You're right, it sounds exactly like what it is. It starts off normal. To some oats, we'll add some water, boil till creamy. Now it gets weird. Amir wants me to put broth powder and some sunny side up eggs. When he mentioned sunny side up eggs, he added he trusts me. That's a reference to my streak of not being able to cook a single egg properly. I'm sorry to tell you, Amir, you underestimated my laziness because I'm about to replace both the broth powder and eggs with miso paste. I understand where you're going. It's just a savory oat, so I think it'll do. Finally, some soy sauce, stir that together, and we're done. Here's what I call the healthy lunch for a Japanese horse. Horse. So when it first entered my mouth, I kind of wanted to spit it out. But the more I chew it, the more I realize it's really flavorful, and maybe oats is supposed to be savory. It reminds me of one of those Chinese porridge thing that they serve at Cantonese restaurants. Better than I expected, but I'm not gonna take a second bite. 7.5 out of 10. This one is said to be a traditional family recipe called the milk soup. It's ironic how it's a family recipe, but my dad's still not back with the milk. While the milk is coming to a simmer, we'll add some sugar, and I don't know what these these noodles are, so I'll go with the ramen noodles. It's all noodles, it should be similar.
Once the noodles are cooked, it's ready to consume. It's just hot milk and sugar and instant noodles with nothing else, no seasoning. And I'm gonna taste it and rate it one through ten. I'm gonna gonna put this in my mouth. <sighs> Now back to the small pot with spraying some oil and put it on high heat, starting with scrambling some eggs. Now when the eggs are cooked, we'll put in some diced tomatoes. I just diced them really, really fine. We'll season it with soy sauce and water, and again, coming with a whole packet of indomie. I feel like with this, we're exiting the realm of struggle meals, so it's okay to go above and beyond with this one. cheese pole and tomato sauce this is like if you had lasagna for dinner and threw it up later that night so let's give it a taste and rate it 113 i've always been a big fan of the tomato and egg combo so coming into it i knew it's gonna be decent it's kind of like shakshuka or that chinese dish we just added a whole packet of indomie into it even though it tastes great i'm gonna give it a 6.9 because it has too many steps this is an important category because I just learned that 20% of all calories consumed by human beings on earth is in the form of rice. That means one in every five calories. No wonder why egg fried rice can become its own niche on YouTube. Our first recipe is from Bechamel sauce. Is this short for Bechamel sauce? He calls it vomit rice. Mmm, yum. Starting with dried seaweed, I'm gonna cut up some of these old sushi nori into a pot, then some instant noodle seasoning, obviously in domi again. A third of water, of a cup or of the pot. Put it on the stove to simmer and stream in an egg. Kinda similar to the technique from egg drop soup. The smell of the seaweed and egg combined is really coming through, like a polluted beach with sulfur. After 30 seconds of stirring, we'll add the rice and let it sit for 45 seconds before pouring it out. Not gonna lie, Bisham sauce nailed it with the name. The only difference between this and vomit is the reflective acidity. Let's give it a taste and rate it 1 through 10. Tastes like the combination of a seaweed miso soup and porridge, so things I don't enjoy. But the ramen seasoning packet really saved it. I think this only tastes good if you're cold and starving. 7.2 out of 10. The next rice recipe also has a great name. Anna calls it the fake risotto. I can already feel Italian hands coming on my face just by deciding to make this dish. All we need to do is combine cooked rice, cream cheese, mozzarella, she made never ending raclette, oregano, and ketchup. We'll mix everything together and put it in the microwave for 30 seconds. Honestly, I think the name of the previous dish is more fitting here. Maybe I should post this on Instagram and tell everybody it's risotto. Nah, I don't want to be dealing with mean comments today. It seems really thick and sounds like a good mac and cheese. A lot of tiny cheese pulls going on here. It does have the consistency of risotto, but the overall flavors reminds me of Wegmans sushi rolls. I'm a fan of cheesy rice, so I'll give it an 8.6 out of 10. I know it doesn't look good, but it tastes decent. You can add some protein in it, and it's a complete meal. Now to the land of diabolical ideas, murder attempts. Surprisingly, these are the simplest dishes of the day. Starting with the OJ goldfish cereal. Yep. It's exactly how it sounds, so the normal cereal procedure. Believe me when I tell you, there's no goldfish in my local grocery store. So once we pour the juice, cheesy fish will be replaced by the extra toasty square with the hole in it. This is like the medicine for calcium deficiency, or a sign of mental instability. So let's try it out. I'm ashamed to admit it, but I'm digging this. A lot. Normally when I eat Cheez-Its, it's always too dry. My throat is extremely experienced with swallowing, but they still manage to give me salty surprises sometimes. So with the moisture from the OJ, it balances it out. I guess cheese and fruit has always been a good combo. 8.3 out of 10. Aya claims this is a Filipino classic, the Milo over rice. I have no idea what Milo is. Personally, I'm more of a fan of Ovaltine because it's British and Milo is Canadian. Considering Maltesers are my favorite candy, I'm sure this wouldn't be that bad. We just put a couple scoops of Milo powder on top of cooked rice and eat it just like this. Well, it's definitely not bad, but it's not good either. Uh, I'll give it a neutral score of 4 out of 10. I'll never... I feel like I just wasted my jaw energy. Majabin gave us two recipes. I'm only gonna make the first one, which starts with an egg in a mug. Seems to be a theme of this episode. A little bit of sugar and two teaspoons of powdered milk. Gonna go with Milo. Is Milo milk? Mix it all together and put it in the microwave for a minute. When it's done, I'm a little bit confused by its looks. So jiggly. 
doesn't feel like something you should be putting into your mouth, but it's basically a sweetened egg with a little bit of coagulated egg white on top. Last but not least, we have the most straightforward instruction ever. Takis dipped in Nutella. Somehow, every Struggle Meal episode ends with a bag of Takis. But as a wise man once said, I would like the Taki to you on the phone. For such simple instructions, let's get straight into the trying it and rating it on 13. While my body is confused, but my mind is pleased. The Nutella kind of masks the pungent flavors from the Taki seasonings and mellows it out with the creaminess. Combined together, it makes the Taki smoother and the Nutella more exciting. 9 out of 10. This is kind of life-changing. Is that why Leon dyed his hair Taki color? Because I'm thinking about doing the same thing. I offered some to my roommate, but got rejected. You probably wouldn't believe me either, so why don't you try it for yourself? Anyways, it's always great to test out your recipes. It makes me realize every Everybody's so creative. I apologize that I couldn't review everybody's submissions. We'll do more of these videos in the future. These creative struggle meals aren't just about saving money or struggling. I see them as all of your innate ability to make the best of a bad situation or find joy within the harshness of life. As I said it before, remember the most important part of a struggle meal is to eat it with a heart full of hope. Alright, thank you.